Hi everyone and uh, welcome back. So uh, my name is Dragon44, hope you're having a great day, evening or night so far. Uh, so this is basically my last video before Season 7 of Apex Legends arrives. Uh, and that is actually going to be on the 4th of November, so it's not actually that far away. But, you know, I like to have a, a day or so's break and, you know, have more new content uh, regarding Season 7 and the new maps. Uh, so basically, uh, yesterday I posted a video about decision making, how to improve your decisions, what to do right, what to do wrong all those good things so before I get into it I just wanted to say uh, stay apex uh, never stop believing in yourself and of course keep moving because if you don't keep moving you're gonna die so just uh, a little pointer there uh, for the end right so basically getting into the video of course then uh, rush into the building loot quickly fire from the hip the G7 now whether this was the right decision or not I mean it worked out for me so I guess it's the right decision but however uh, luckily the caustic had an L stop which I had heard previously fire I get pushed then by of course Loba I manage from the hip to down her and I get the revive it works out okay this time now where the sort of decision making comes into it now this is, is such a finite thing in this particular uh, case I spent a bit of a while looting I had to try and pick up a shotgun yeah it's this, this looting was terrible and definitely I would say over and over again definitely loot up quicker I could have also put the drone down uh, for JHD I didn't again he had a med pack but I could have saved him that and got him the heal little things just some stuff is just you know you make really silly mistakes I pinged the body shield must have been a couple of times uh, finally I think he does kind of grab it and we get then pushed by a bloodhound now I do play a little aggressively he then gets attacked by I think a mirage so I take on the bloodhound uh, don't forget it's a squad of three and of course I do manage to down the bloodhound thankfully as well and first for the kill again I would never recommend thirsting for the kill but I think that I'm pretty safe and I run off then to uh, of course heal now up to this point I mean okay was it perfect decision making debatable but this is where unfortunately one of the bad decisions gets made now it is a very situational one but I push of course then to go and get uh, Viper's banner because he, unfortunately he got downed I haven't replenished my shield I'm assuming that there's no one else around and I'm gonna fly over here now the reason it is because we've already wiped out two squads I'm assuming that there's no one else here. No audio, run into the building, and yeah, then decide to replenish my shield, realizing it, was, it ran out anyway, but I get killed for my trouble. Silly. We're never gonna make it. Why did I push? Should have got the shield. And you know, as much as I would have liked to have done that, it was really, really, really annoying. Now, the actual full match is a slightly different one. Uh, this one it is just basically showing that when you do the things correctly, uh, the match works out, you get a good amount of kills, and of course, you know, you can kind of have a win as well, which is really, really nice. But these kind of like matches, I think, are very kind of like anything. They work out sometimes, they don't always work out every single match. Now sometimes you can get yourself surrounded and put yourself into a bad position. And that probably is one of the key things that really comes down to the match is positional play. Where you put yourself, do you put yourself out in the open, do you keep covered, do you hug the walls, do you try and remain not seen as much as possible? Sometimes you've got no choice, you're going to have to kind of go out in the open and you've kind of got to be aware. I mean, I'm pinging someone over in, in Epicenter, great, yeah, just telling my friend that they're shooting there, but realistically, mm, and I see the footprints. Now this is the, the good thing about Bloodhound, but of course you don't get this warning on every single legend. Luckily on that particular one I get the warning, I now know there are enemies near and it is very red so I know that they're not that far away. Now one of the things is is that you know I'm sort of kind of looking for them, literally see them over in the distance. Now I don't uh, start taking shots, one big mistake I make is as I then get too close, stand there too still, they see me and of course they start shooting why did I let them see me and why did I stand there too long and then we realize that now we're in between two squads which has put ourselves into a much worse position now we've got one already shooting um, at us and the other one is of course going to join in and this is kind of one of those plays where realistically you don't want to get yourself surrounded in between two squads because they will automatically kill you first and then fight it out between themselves that is guaranteed so you know something to really kind of look for I mean again I'm sure a lot of you know this but 
you know, for those who don't, or for those who maybe aren't aware so much, it's one of those things. Luckily, take the lifeline down, uh, quickly grab a, a few bits, and uh, of course, uh, go from there. Yeah, well, I say quickly, my looting is not the best sometimes, because often the backpack is full, and I really, really hate that. It doesn't let me just swap out the items, something I'd love to kind of see. Luckily, given that the storm is doing a lot of damage, uh, this was a little bit late in the game, so I think it was the second storm, I kind of, uh, you know, managed to heal. And my friend does the most awesome wraith portal ever known to man. Yeah, nice one, by, but that was uh, absolutely brilliant. Uh, we realised then that there is another squad right here we don't want to push we don't want to of course uh, you know put ourselves into a bad position so i'm sort of covering uh, literally the doors you know i know that viper's gonna have to heal and of course he starts healing then as well now like anything i do realize that they're above so they're not going to push or they're not going to be like on us so of course then i just quickly heal up a syringe knowing that viper's also healed as well scan it out work out their positions yep okay so there's two of them in the building it's not just one that we could push and i say like okay let's get out of here bad position let's uh, let's move now they try and take a little pot shot yeah they get a little grazed thing but nothing uh, too bad of course uh, you know i've said in my last video you know use a little shield if you're not being pushed to keep the big shields for those really tight situations where you need that speed to of course get healed up and I say, right, okay, well, we've got time. Let's go into this building here. Um, and then we can literally get height position. We can look actually over on the next building. And, of course, uh, try and, of course, pick them off. Maybe as when they come in the storm or maybe when, you know, they, they, they try and push us or anything like that. So, of course, like we do, we gain positional height advantage. Um, we literally shoot, of course, uh, try and deal some damage. Yeah, they know we're here anyway. Uh, Bloodhound is going to do another scan. I've already scanned as well, and they will scan our position. Uh, so they'll know where we are. Now, there is a couple of little things. I mean, taking some shots, dealing some damage, is that really necessary? Well, I suppose it all helps towards getting that next Evo Shield level. So sometimes, you know, if you're shooting from range, you're not in any danger of getting killed and you can deal some damage. Um, of course, it never hurts, but just make sure that you've got plenty of shield cells, plenty of other things to, of course, keep healing up. If you haven't got enough, then, of course, it's going to be a bit of a disadvantage. Probably the biggest thing that was a real nightmare uh, for this particular match was, at a certain point, the lack of ammo. Luckily, Viper was also using light and happened to have light on him. So, of course, uh, when I run out or start running out, he is able to give me about 60, which really helped. Um, so, you know, again, good communication with your, your team. You know, I always say this, but I mean, if you are with randoms, I mean, some randoms will be helpful if you actually ask, and others, not so much, but, you know, that's the way it is with randoms, they're, they're an interesting bunch, uh, yeah, needless to say, if you're with a teammate, though, even if you're on ping or with your own mic, you can actually communicate and say, I do need some ammo, have you got any, and if they happen to have some, then, of course, it really helps. So for now, of course, we're just going to wait it out. We know that the next storm circle is not for a while, so we've got a little bit of time. We don't want to go rushing down there because it gives away our height position. We'll let them run away, which, of course, they eventually do. Uh, they know that they're in a bad position. They know, they know that there's no point in fighting us necessarily, so although they do for a little bit, they will decide to, of course, uh, run away eventually. And this is uh, one of those things. Uh, so, yeah, so, I mean, of course, you know, sometimes with these matches, I mean, although getting kills and stuff like that is also a really good thing, you just know that they're not in the building. I see the, the one of them running away. I kind of guessed that they weren't there. I said, well, scan just in case one hung back. He didn't. So, of course, uh, then you, you kind of push. But then again, we come across another squad. So then it's like, oh, right, actually, we'll just kill these guys. Uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, of course, we've got the height advantage. There's no point in jumping down. Uh, literally, they don't really seem to know what they're doing on, on this occasion. I mean, what is this guy doing? Uh, I'd be running to cover like the other one. Uh, I use Beast of the Hunt. I push. I now know uh, where the other one is, of course, because of the scan. And, of course, I can go and actually kill them as well. They are a bloodhound. Now, one thing that uh, I would definitely say is, is, in most cases, swapping weapon is a really good idea. Uh, but I had a little bit of cover there. I was able to duck behind and reload. The reload on the vault is exceptionally quick. It's about three seconds. I think that is a bit too insane for the type of SMG it is. Again, let me know in the comments below whether you think it needs a slight nerf. And will we get one in Season 7? Because I'd be really interested to sort of see, would we get you know, a nerf for some other guns. I know that the Hemlock's supposed to be nerfed, I know the Triple Take's supposed to be nerfed, and the L-Star's supposed to be buffed, 
But do we know anything else at the moment? The Prowler is going into the care package for those who haven't seen any other videos. I'm sure you have, but, you know, just so you know. Uh, so, yeah, so, I mean, of course, you know, take the Bloodhound and, of course, the other one down. I don't even remember who that was, so they're dead. Um, no one else pushed us, which is really good. And, of course, then it becomes time to move because of the storm. Now, losing up becomes optional. I mean, you know, finding little things like this uh, is not very often that this happens. I try as quickly as I can to grab some light ammo. I say quickly, it's not the fastest ever, but, you know, it's sometimes it is really hard with the uh, the cursor, or, like the controller. It doesn't really scroll that fast over things. So whereas, like, a mouse you, the keyboard you can click really quick, you can't really click it as fast. So that is something to bear in mind. If you're, uh, you know, of course, uh, on a mouse and keyboard on PC, make sure you practice your looting. You know, the quicker you are, the better it is, because, of course, you know, it's going to get you out of situations. It's going to get you away from death boxes, and they can be the death of you, quite literally. Very very, very sad but that's just the truth so one thing here is, is I split off from Viper I go upstairs whether this was a good idea I mean in actual truth because of the storm it could have been the death of me it's because I think I hear somebody somebody dies right here I then go out and realize there's two I get hit I back off now fortunately one thing that they don't do is push me but because I think they don't know how many people are in there and they're a bit concerned as to about you know positional play whether they're gonna get melted I then have to run through the storm now look at that damage just look at that damage for two ticks it's quite a bit now I do then decide to use a med pack I block the door just in case the team decide to push luckily they don't so of course again we're just literally sitting pretty and it is a nice thing in this instance and a lot of the time now it just becomes a bit of waiting it out just kind of getting that positional play getting that idea and of course seeing what's going to happen now when the storm gets really small and the storm circle starts shrinking of course you've got to start making these well seemingly these right decisions this is tough so i literally lead uh, viper through into the other building say right okay let's go here um, let's go up the stairs and of course we can try and gain and gain the height advantage now we do run into a gibraltar and a bangalore uh, but there's also a caustic gas here as well. So uh, luckily uh, Viper manages to down uh, the caustic, the Gibraltar even. Literally kind of find the other one. And it turns out to be a Bangalore in the smoke. I don't know where the caustic smoke came from exactly. But he must have thrown it from another building. Of course the other guy goes out. I take a guess that he's there. And he's low health because of the gas. Job done. So luckily this works out. And I have to pop a phoenix. Now one of those things that is always uh, kind of awkward is a phoenix. They take a long time. Um, probably could have done a big shield battery. But I thought I had time. Jump down. And of course make sure that you do of course reload all your guns. Again a very important important decision as you can see now i do skyrocket a lot of shots because i rush and you know i just reloaded very awful uh unluckily viper uh, gets downed by the lifeline uh it's quite surprising here because you know again i'm sort of like well, do i get the revive do i not and then i realized that the whoever it is the octane i think didn't even realize that i was there so of course i quickly uh, do that jump behind the uh, the barrier I don't even know how this worked, didn't take any damage, get the revive, and uh, don't get seen by the Octane. I mean, th this is absolutely insane in my eyes. I don't even know how they didn't notice. Um, I mean, that is just one of those things where there isn't really any kind of, like, exact explanation for it. You just have to take what comes. If you can use cover to revive, if you can gain a little bit of position like that, then use it but nine times out of ten most teams probably would hear you and they would kill you so it becomes a little bit of a thing now lastly at the end i run round and of course i get the final kill he is low on health but i do the flank he doesn't expect me to be there and of course i kill him so that is it so that is pretty much uh, the sort of it for the video i thought i would share it with you hope you liked it if you did drop me a like if you want to subscribe please do but otherwise i will see you in season seven i hope you have a great rest of the day evening or night you take care and see you in the next video cheers now Bye-bye.